I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. I, I was merely trying to put you out. Well, you certainly succeeded. I'm, I'm very put out. <sighs> I'm sorry it was necessary. Come along. Uh, I suppose I ought to say thank you, but I'm just so tired, I'm not thinking. Uh, I, I saw your signal. Oh, thank goodness, somebody did. I've been lost for days. You mean you're alone? I've been looking for Boonesboro. It must be somewhere near here. I'm headed there myself. If you can walk, I'll have you there in an hour. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, don't worry. I'm all right. After all I've been through, another hour's nothing if it means finding Daniel Boone. Madeline almost convinced me. Well, Blakely, step number one accomplished. of all. All right, now you get this through your heads and you get it straight. Soldiers you're not, and soldiers you might not want to be. But the most important battle that may ever be fought on this frontier rests on you. Well, you men are going to be ready for it if I have to march the legs off every man in this settlement. Captain, look. It's Daniel Boone. Boone's back. Dismiss him, Sergeant. That'll be all for the day. Dismiss. Quite a spell. A mighty quick trip for all the way from Philadelphia. Well, it turned out to be a rather urgent business. You actually meet with the Continental Congress? Oh, no, not the whole shebang. They're pretty busy men. Just the committee that sent for me. Daniel, it's good to see you back, man. You bring me orders from the Congress. I sure did. Well, finally, we'll be marching against the Indians then. Well, not exactly. Uh, let's go inside. Daniel, what do you mean, not exactly? What are my orders? Well, we're not going to march against the Five Nations, Captain. We're going to try to make peace with them. You're joking, man. Peace? Peace as it were the most treacherous confederation of savages in the entire territory. Now, all right, all right. Whose who's brilliant idea was that, I'd like to know? Strategy Committee. They've already had word from Rain Cloud that he's willing to talk. So it kind of looks like the rest up to us. Well, they're a bunch of feather-brained, under-headed fools, is what they are. They're sitting on their fat backsides up there that... Look, Daniel, you were a frontiersman. Didn't you tell them, man? You know that you know that a strong militia force striking out from Bowensboro could break up the Indian Alliance once and for all and go a long step toward driving the British permanently out of the Ohio Territory. Maybe. 
we'd have to have a lot more luck than we've had so far. And you also know that if you sign a treaty of neutrality with the Five Nations, we won't be able to attack north of the Ohio at all. I reckon. But if the Indians swing to the British, we'll be outnumbered every place we turn. But if the Five Nations agree to stay neutral, we've turned the tables, and we'll have more men on the frontier than the Redcoats can muster. Sure, sure, we will. If the Indians respect the treaty, we will. They'll respect it if Dan will sign it. And you're willing to gamble the fate of the entire frontier on that kind of blind faith, are you? I am. Well, Captain, the only real danger I see is if the British find out about our meeting with Rain Cloud and try to do something to stop it before we can come to an agreement. Where does this famous meeting take place? On the Ohio. Indian territory. In neutral territory. Rain Cloud has agreed to come with only four sub-chiefs to sit in council. What do you mean, with no warriors? No warriors. And you're going to take his word for that? Well, it seems he's going to take my word. Why should I doubt his? survivors unless some of them were carried off prisoner. She doesn't know, not even about her own husband. Where did it happen? Up in the Ohio, about a hundred miles from here, a place called Tamarack. Well, that's very close to where our council meeting is to take place. Daniel, it sounds like Raiden Cloud has brought his warriors in spite of your agreement. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. She's in no condition to answer questions now. This is something Becky can attend to. You're going to be all right now, ma'am. I won't see you at the cabin later. refreshing yourself. And don't you men go plaguing her with questions. She's been through a terrible experience. Well, I wish she had some idea which tribe it was. In the dead of night, how could she? Now that I know the difference in the tribes when I first came to Kentucky. You know, if there were British with them, Daniel. She said only Indians, Captain Ives. Well, there you are, then. It's something the murderer and savages thought of them. She sure's a lot prettier than she was when she got here. Yes, Rio. Did I hear the name right? Captain Ives? Oh, he has my deepest sympathy, madam. It's not by any chance Captain Robert Ives, the hero of Portsmouth? Well, uh, I'm sure I was at Portsmouth, madam, but with the name hero, I think should be reserved for men far braver than I. Mr. Boone, of course. Oh, I'm so relieved to find you here. Truly, my prayers have been answered. Now, what can I tell you, gentlemen? How can I help you? Oh, no, no, go ahead. Truly, I'm, I'm just fine now. Well, Miss Lorne... No, uh, uh, won't you sit down, Mrs. Lorne? Mrs. Lorne, we'd like to know how you managed to get here. By the grace of God, Mr. Boone. It's all a, a terrible dream now. It, days and nights all blurred together. Running till I, till I was exhausted and hiding at night, terrified that they'd come back again and find me. Eating anything I could lay my hands on, nuts, berries. I, 
One time I, I stumbled across some nesting quail and stole the eggs, poor little things. But I'd go through it all again tomorrow if it would see those dreadful fiends wiped out to the last man. Well, there are an awful lot of Indians north of the Ohio. It would help to know which ones were involved. Anything at all that you can remember? Paint, the way they wore their hair? Oh, I remember all right. It was shaved at the sides, and they had a big black crest of hair running down the middle. Iroquois. All right, that settles it down. Rain clouds, old man. Now, what about your treaty? Treaty? Don't tell me you had a treaty with those murderous savages. Well, we were just about ready to start out by an order of the Continental Congress to dicker for one. Well, that's impossible now, of course. Isn't it, Captain Ives? Under the circumstances, a direct attack's the only thing. Well, it does seem reasonable that we'd take our rifles along as well as our peace pipes. All right, and the sooner the better. My old militia will be ready to start at sunup in the morning. Twelve men will be enough, Captain. Hand-picked, I'll give you a list. So few? My husband, some of the other men, they may be prisoners. They must be rescued, Mr. Boone. As brave a man as, as Captain Oz is, he can't hope to accomplish all that with just a dozen men. If we show up in force, that'll be a hostile move on our part. Rain Cloud won't counsel with us, and I won't risk that. Besides, we don't know what we're up against until we look at Mrs. Lawrence camp and find out exactly what did happen. Oh, for the love of heaven, man, hasn't the poor woman told us enough already? For now, I guess. I understand your concern over the fate of your husband and the rest. We'll free them if they're alive, and we'll try to find out who's responsible and punish them. But at the same time, we're going to try to sign a treaty with the Five Nations, too. Twelve men, Captain, no more. All right, Mr. Boone, just as you say. But I think it's absolute folly, and I'll say so in my report. Well, it's a free country. And if we're lucky, it'll stay that way. Daniel, it might save time if Mrs. Lawrence would give us such directions as she's able. If she could draw some sort of maps. I'll do better than that. I'll show you the way once we get somewhere near the river. You mean go with us? I admire your spunk, ma'am, but you've already walked a good many miles. Which proves I could do it again. My husband, Mr. Boone, I must know if he's alive. I can't stand to just sit here and wait. And you know I can make it, don't you, Mingo? Besides, I want to see if you're still talking treaty with them when you see what they did to us. And Captain Ives needs somebody to identify the Indians, don't you? She's right, Daniel. If any of his people are involved, Chief Raincloud certainly won't take our word for it. You know, Daniel, if it'll save us only a few hours, it'll be worth the risk. I don't know, I'll personally look after her. She'll be no trouble. All right, while well, since Alice is outfitting Captain Nye's men, Rebecca, you'd better take over with this recruit. mean peace. There's no point in watching the trail. If they mean war, they'll let us get as close as possible before they show their hand. But isn't that a rather risky way of finding out? No better way? No. Everything loaded? Including them presents you ordered for rain cloud. Pardon me. Panel. You are out a pretty penny for all them stores. Well, if the captain and those men can soldier for free, the least I can do is feed them on the march. Yeah, reckon it would seem so. Sure ain't no way to run a business. But if we get a treaty with the Five Nations, maybe it'll perk a trade up some. Well, it might. Tell you what, Daniel. You keep it quiet, and I'll go have us with you. Well, thank you, Cincinnatus. You keep an eye on things. Don't worry, Daniel. I'll know what to do. Ready when you are, Captain. It'll be just a moment. There's something I want to do. Mrs. Lauren, would you come with me? 
You can stand at rest, but I want your attention. Now, you all know that our orders are to proceed directly to a meeting with the chiefs of the Five Nations. And they're to support Mr. Daniel Boone here in his negotiations for a, for a peace treaty with him. Well, the situation is gravely altered. This is Mrs. Madeline Lord. Mrs. Lorne has reason to believe that her husband and all of her friends have been killed by Indians, very probably the self-same ones we're supposed to be meeting. All right, now, Mrs. Lorne will accompany us as far as the scene of... begging your pardon, the massacre. What we find there will determine any further course of action. All right, I want you all to open your ears now. I want the presence of this brave little woman amongst us to be a constant reminder to us all or should we have to engage with the Indians? Our duty is clear and plain. There'll be no quarter given and no mercy shown. And that's all I have to say. All right, you can move them out, Sergeant. Detail, Tench. Hook about please. Forward. Two weeks, maybe less. Hook. Mama, you youngest, take care of your mom. OK, Pa. <laughs> Russell, I haven't had a chance to tell you how fortunate we are to have a man of your military experience with us, Captain Ives. You believe me, the good fortune is mine, madam. Maybe it's just female foolishness or intuition, but there is something that's been bothering me. Oh. I've heard it said that Mr. Boone tends to favor the Indians whenever possible. Well, you don't think that's true, do you, Captain Ives? Well, maybe a wee bit. It's probably the influence of the Cherokee, you know. Mingo? Yeah, but don't you worry about it. I intend to give them both the full benefit of me best counsel and judgment. <laughs> that does relieve my mind, but... Detail! Please, oh. Captain, I, I do want to help, and, and I must find my husband, but after all your kindness to me, I could never forgive myself if my presence became a, well, a, a source of friction to you. Dear lady, how could your presence be anything but an inspiration to us all? <sighs> What a generous thing to say. Friend Boone is a strong-minded man, you know, and perhaps he's a wee bit jealous of his reputation. We've had a difference of opinion or two already, but he seems a fair man in his way. Now, don't you worry about a thing. You just put your trust in me, Madeline. What seems to be the trouble, ma'am? Trouble? Maybe we ought to put you on one of these pack horses right off. Oh, I am sorry. We do have to keep on marching, don't we? We're going to get to your people in time to do them any good. I'll have a word with you, Captain. Oh, oh yes, all right, Mr. Bonner. How stupid of me. I seem to be making a nuisance of myself already. Not at all, Mrs. Lawn. In Kentucky, nuisances come in a somewhat different type of package, I assure you. I generally like to stick to my own chores and appreciate the same in others. But you might want to open up your marching order a little. Well, Mr. Boone, I thought that you didn't expect any contact with the hostiles until we got to this side of the West Fork. Well, I don't. Not from the Five Nations, anyway. We don't know that they're hostile yet. And until we do, we'll just keep hoping. But I do know those boys yonder are Kentuckians. And they'd be a sight happier with more room to move around. All right, Sergeant, spread them out. From now on, we'll march in open order. Yes, sir. Break ranks. Open ranks. Hold.
They tell me you're Cherokee, Mingo. My mother was. One of the five civilized tribes, of course. I should have known when you found me in the woods. Your accent, your manners, the unmistakable traits of a gentleman. Some of my Cherokee ancestors might disagree. The other half was English. Really? Yes, I was brought up in London and educated there. And then you came back here? <laughs> Why? Every man has his country. Then what actually are you? I'm an American. You make that sound so important. Well, isn't it to you? How can you ask that? Would I be out here on the frontier if it weren't? Oh, Mrs. Lauren, you ought to be taking advantage of this rest. Boone has given us precious little of it. There's liable to be even less time for it later. I'm quite all right, really, Captain Ives. Mr. Mingo. If your friend Boone doesn't mistrust Rain Cloud's people every bit as much as I do, then what's he what's he prowling around up there all the time for, like a, a cat, even when we're in friendly territory? I wouldn't do that if I were you, Captain. Well, you wouldn't, would you? Question the great man's motives, is it? Question his infallible judgment. Well, it isn't that. It's just that uh, you're stirring up I'm doing no such thing. Now, surely my own judgment has some right to respect. Uh, not at this particular moment, Captain. Ow! 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 Hey, we haven't got time for a swim. What is this? Some kind of Cherokee custom of yours? First class in it, Captain. Well, what do you mean by that, Mr. Boone? Oh, that. Well, I was just, uh... She's a remarkable woman, Mr. Boone. Mm-hmm. I guess I'd better check the centuries again. I just did. Everything's quiet. Too quiet. The British are bound to know that we aim to see Rain Cloud and what we're after. And they probably know when we started and just about where we are. And they haven't tried to stop us. I don't like it. And I should think that that would just be more proof that the Indians who massacred Mrs. Lawrence's party belong to Rain Cloud. Well, we won't have proof of anything one way or another until we look over Mrs. Lawrence's camp. Look, Boone, I know how desperately little you want to believe that Rain Cloud's people had anything to do with the massacre. I also know how much the treaty means to you, but confounded man, the fate of the entire frontier rests in our hands alone right this minute. Or likely the fate of the whole country. All right, then all the more reason to face facts, then. Sure, and the British know where we are, what we're doing, and what our mission is. And they also know you're not going to get your treaty. Well, the Five Nations out in paint, why should the Redcoats bother about us now? Now, the murder and savages will take care of that as soon as we get deep enough into their territories to suit them. If I'd only brought the rest of me militia. Well, now, we'd have a fight on our hands for sure. You better turn your men in. We may be just a mite busy in the morning.
me, Mrs. Lawrence. That's the hill we saw back yonder. We were going to build our church right up there on that knoll. We were camped just beyond it. And the place we were to meet Rain Cloud? Oh, I'd make it about 10 miles further down the river. The thing's stirring out there. You know something, Boone? It's just possible they don't know we're here, that they didn't expect us so soon. I hope you're right. You realize what advantage that gives us? If we head straight for your council grounds, we can be in position by dark now. We've got 15 guns, all told. 16. If we hit them hard and without warning, we could wipe them out in a few volleys. All five of them, Captain? Rain Cloud and the four other chiefs? Surely you can't still expect them to show up alone. Until I see different, I can. Captain Ives is right, Mr. Boone. I beg you to listen to him. I'm sorry. I know how you must feel with our orders from Philadelphia. Now, I'm a soldier. I know what our orders are. Now, I've tried my best to cooperate. Can't you have some consideration for this poor woman here? Surely our first consideration should be to the man who may still be alive in that camp. I could go on ahead, Daniel, and see if Rain Cloud brought any warriors with her. Well, out here, a man's first duty is to himself if he hopes to stay alive long enough to help somebody else. You know that, Mingo. Now, let's follow the timber around the foot of that ridge and don't approach Mrs. Lawrence camp until you get a signal from Mingo or me. time, Boone will join us here. We will smoke the pipe with him and there will be peace among us. My heart is glad. It has been worth waiting for. job. It would be if it were the Iroquois. They probably dumped the bodies in the river so no one could make count. Looks like Mrs. Lorne was a mighty lucky lady. Yes, well, it's something to be grateful for. You were really counting on that treaty with Rain Cloud, weren't you, Daniel? Yeah. It beats fighting a war. Nobody could be sure if we could win. Well... Now you've seen it, Mr. Boone. Well, it looks like you say, Ms. Lorne. We'll attack it once, of course. Well, I'd like to poke around just a little bit more. Now go ahead, Mr. Boone. Take your time. Well, just a few minutes. Ms. Lorne looks like she could use the rest. I didn't come back here to rest, Mr. Boone. Well, come on, Mrs. Lorne. Might as well make yourself comfortable while himself makes up his mind. She does look worn out, Daniel. Shouldn't wonder. I might tuck her down myself. Why don't you build her a fire so somebody can brew her a cup of tea? It might help. Hmm? Yes, yes. Uh, it's just a small fire. And mine is smoke. <laughs> Fire so we can have some tea. 
Go without smoke, Captain. No danger whatever, I assure you. Well, that's all right with me. But what I've got might be do you a little bit more good. Oh, perhaps just a little. It's a Madeira, you know, the finest Mamsie in the world. I've been saving it for a special occasion. What a useful trick. Well, it's really quite simple. All one needs is the bow, the drill, and the proper kindling. You've never seen this done before? Uh-uh. What are you looking at me like that for? Oh, admiration, shall we say? Well, I, uh, I must be getting back. I believe Daniel is waiting for me. You, uh, you must try this sometime. Is something wrong? British tall musket. Same model they've passed out to every tribe they've been able to stir up against us. Hmm. Same model the English issued to their own troops. Are you trying to tell me something? When I first found Madeline Lawn, she had a fire going and was trying to signal for help with it. She didn't even have a knife, let alone a flint and steel. And I just discovered she doesn't know how to use a fire drill. Who built the signal fire for her? That is an interesting question. Are you feeling any better now? No, a little faint. I, I think maybe it's the wine. I'm not used to it. All right, let me, let me fix your blankets here. You can lie down a little. Uh, no, I think I'll just go down to the stream and get a little cold water. No, don't, 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 don't exert yourself. I'll get it for you. Captain, if I'm going to be sick, I want to be by myself. Yes, when she told us what she lived on. Nuts, berries, even quail eggs. A rather curious diet and hardly in season all at the same time. What do you make of all this, Daniel? Well, a British musket could have gotten here any number of ways. They could have carried off their dead as well as their prisoners. Take a look at this. It's funny how little things always trip a feller up. Salt. Plain old ordinary table salt. The most valuable and scarce item on the frontier. You think an air cord overlooked that? Not very likely. And it's like everything else Mrs. Lauren has told us. Her husband, her friends, the massacre. I think the British fixed up this camp so we'd believe her story. And attack rain cloud instead of making peace with her. We'd best get back to Captain Ives before she tricks him into marching on his own. Well, we'd better make our own story watertight first. Captain Ives is pretty far gone. He might be a difficult fellow to convince. That's true. John? What's wrong? Why aren't they moving? That Daniel Bourne. I think he suspects me. And the way that Indian friend of his looked at me, I don't stay there any longer. Are they following you? No, not yet, but we still have a little time. Oh, you little fool. You're supposed to get them to attack the Iroquois camp. If they don't, the whole plan comes to nothing. Don't worry. They'll attack. Go get your horse. Do as I say. should do it. I'll let them pass and move my troops in behind. Right. All they have to do is kill one chief, 
and we've done what we've been sent to do. Hang on. Come on. All right, we're heading straight for the Indian camp. Now, you watch out for Mrs. Lorne, but you shoot the first Indian you see. Captain Ives! It's no use, Daniel. They're gone. They're heading up for the council ground, but the scream came from over here. My sisters don't. The Americans are on their way to attack Ring Cloud. Good news, sir. Then we'd best be on our way to attack the Americans. At once. You two, over here. Escort Miss Lorne back to the post. See to it she has anything she needs. A bath and a fresh change sound good for a starter. Oh, heavenly. Then a banquet, complete to champagne. I'll join you shortly. This won't take long. Oh, the ranks. Shod. Carrying double from here on. No Indian was riding. the rest of the story, that part I can believe. They have Captain Ives and his men trapped between them and the Iroquois camp. If there was some way to get to Ives before he shoots himself an Indian. Mm. Mingo, do you feel like tackling some pretty long odds? With you, are there any other kind? What I have in mind should work for one of us. Let's try for that patch of trees over there. They'll have to pass through it directly. behind you. You're trapped unless you get in here fast. Captain Ives, signal if you can hear me.
This is the way a friend comes in peace. Many men, many guns. The British lied to us. They accused your warriors of burning out a camp of settlers up the valley. Not settlers' camp. Red coat make it, then burn it. We think because it was not to their liking. Well, it was to their liking, all right. Did I hear you right, Mr. Boone? What kind of a trick is this? British one, and they almost took us in. Boys, here they come! All right, spread out, men! Well, Captain, here's a chance to see if your drill's going to pay off. All right, men. Pick your target. Fire! Now, Mingo, in times of war, a man uses his strength, and whatever weapons his ingenuity can devise, why not a woman? Supposing that I can see the specious logic, Miss Lorne, I'm still relieved to discover that you've never had a husband. Otherwise, I might have spent the rest of my life feeling sorry for a most unfortunate man. Let me remind you, my half-English, half-Cherokee friend, that you're a British prisoner, and the penalty for treason is death. And let me remind you what American patriots are saying these days. No man who has denied his freedom wants to live. of you to wait for us. There for a while, I kind of thought we were going to let you down. For a while, I thought you had. Well, Captain Sin is how you're in command, and it's kind of your celebration. Why don't you sit at the head of the table? I'll sit here. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Bull. Uh. What is this, John? What does this mean? tell you, Mrs. Lorne, or whatever your rightful name is, that he's been obliged to surrender this post to us. You'll all be taken south as prisoners to be held for exchange. Now, if you'll excuse me, Sergeant. Yes, sir. If they're ready in the kitchen, I think you can tell them to commence serving. Oh, Sergeant, uh, if you can lay your hand on some paper and quill, we might as well get that treaty down with rain cloud and writing while we're waiting. Right away, Daniel. A great man once said, Miss Lorne, that to free another is the first step in freeing oneself. She took in three grown men so completely, I'll never know. No, oh, it isn't as difficult as you think, Captain. You know something, Mingo? There was a time or two there I would have bet a musket barrel over your head. Hmm. Well, I didn't exactly love my fellow men as I should have either. 
Well, the trouble was, both you fellows could have used some lessons in romancing a pretty gal. Which you were perfectly willing to give, no doubt. Oh, no. Only in theory. Only in theory. Well, now, you know, I'll say this for Daniel. She never showed any favoritism. I mean, you had your chance, man. Oh, you certainly did. Oh, the way she clung to your neck as you crossed that ford. Shameful it was. Really? <sighs> Can't we talk about anything else but that woman? Mama, aren't you doing something different with your hair? Ah, uh, she thinks it makes you look like that Mrs. Lauren. Israel. Oh, well, sure, now I can see that. There's a kind of a similarity in style there, you know? Very flattering, my love. Do you really think so, Captain Ives? That I do. Well, you might uh, make a deeper wave on the right side, perhaps. Hmm? Mm hmm. <clears throat> Maybe a little wisp sort of peeping out the. Must we, gentlemen, please? All right. We won't mention her again. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> no use, Ma. They ain't saying it all right. You sure can hear what they're thinking. <laughs> Daniel Bloom was a man, yes, a big man. With an eye like an eagle and as small as a mountain was he. Daniel Bloom was a man, yes, a big man. He was brave. Yeah.